Bear with me. There we go. So today we're going to be experimenting with adding tint to our colours by mixing them with white on our palette. And we're just going to start off just playing with that on a bit of scrap paper. So if you've got paper from before where you did some of our little preliminary exercises, then just on the back of that is fine. This is just a bit of rough paper, but just as long as it's this special 300 GSM watercolour paper. I'm just going to take my number eight brush or number six mid-sized brush. And what we're going to do today is we're going to start using this palette that we've got here. It's the lid of our paint box, but it's got these little sections in here for us to mix our colors in. And so we're just going to start by taking a color and just adding some of that into our palette just to start off with. So we can pick any color we like. I'm gonna wake my brush up, give it a good swirl around in my water, either jar, they're both clean, and then just tap it once against the side just so that it's not too wet. I'm going to pick any colour that I like. I mean, I'm going to go for this one, I reckon. But you can go for any one you like. We're just getting a feel for how this works. And I'm just going to paint a splash of that just on the paper, just so that I know what it looks like as is. And now I'm just going to start adding it to my palette. And you're going to see that it beads up and it forms these little these little drops like that. It doesn't seem to want to to lie very easily on the on the on the metal, but it, that's okay because we don't need too much paint for what we're doing. So I'm just going to do that, and I might do that a couple of times, just reloading my brush, and then just dropping some paint into this palette. It doesn't look very substantial, but it's enough for us. And then once I've done that, once we've got our colour, and it can be any colour. We're just going to experiment with adding a bit of white to it just to make it lighter. So I'm going to rinse my brush. And the way I do this is I've, I've got my dirty water jar and my clean water jar. And I'm going to swirl it around in the dirty water. And then tap it out a bit. And then just quickly in our clean water so that we're not getting any of this color into our white. And then just tap it once to make sure it's not dripping. And then I'm going to get my white and I'm going to do much the same as I did with my color, just load up the brush. And then once that's done, I'm just going to swirl it around in here. Just introduce the two, get them acquainted and right away mixing in that white, we've made a, a lighter color. I think I might do that again. So just again, making sure to wash in our dirty water jar and then in our clean water jar. However hard I try, I can't stop color from getting into that white. It's got a distinctly lilac-y, ghostly hue to it now. So that's why I'm taking extra care just to make sure that all this color is gotten out of the brush before I go into the white again. So now with a second brush look of white, I'm just going to chuck that in. And our color will get lighter still. And now I'm going to paint it next to the one that we've got. Just to get a sense of how we've managed to make this color lighter. And maybe I'll add in just a, a final thing of white. Just so we've got our three colors getting progressively lighter. Because previously we've made our colors a little fainter by making them more dilute, but then we can sort of see through them, can't we? Whereas with tinting them like this, they're still a nice strong color. They're just a bit lighter. Thank you. 
And now I'm just rinsing out my brush. And now that we've done that, now that we've added tint to some color, I think it's time to apply this to what we're doing with our goldfinch. So still with our scrap paper, what I'd like us to do is try and see if we can approximate some of the colors on this goldfinch. So let's have a look at some of the colors that this fella has, because I reckon some of these don't exist in our palette. I reckon if we look at our palette next to our goldfinch, there's this sort of there's this sort of um, toasted sort of color here, isn't there, on his back and here as well near the tail and a little daub of it there. And that's quite a subtle sort of grayish brown, light sort of brown. Mm -hmm. And we don't really have that here. I think the, the closest thing sort of tonally is this fella here, but he's way too dark. So I think we're going to want to add some white just to get that color. <laughs> and the second color I think that we'd struggle to get on our palette alone is this sort of latte, sort of cappuccino coloring that we've got here, this sort of this sort of downy stuff. And again, I think this fella here looks closest tonally, but he'd be way too dark. So those are those are two colors that we're going to want to create with our goldfinch, and maybe also <coughs> maybe also this sort of faint pinkish color that we've got of the of his feet and of his bill. So these are some colors that we're going to want to mix today. And I think before we crack on with our big picture it might just be worth doing what we've done with our color here and just doing that with our with our goldfinch colors so always bearing in mind i think i'm going to start off with this sort of this cappuccino color here and i'm going to pop that to one side because i think your pictures will be more vibrant than the webcam image off this so go off that and we're just going to Having that as a reference point, we're just going to play around with our palette and just try and get a colour that approximates that nicely. I'm sort of dropping it like that in these quick short strokes just to drop the drop the color into the palette to get as much off the brush as I can. And then I think this fella's quite straightforward. I'm just gonna add some white to it.
So I'm relatively happy with what I've got here. It's a sort of approximation of our sort of latte color that we've got there. So just once we've, we're satisfied that we've made something that's similar to that, I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush and have a think about this slightly darker brown that we've got on our goldfinch's back. Because this, this color again, I, I think that from our, from our colors, this, this fella here is quite similar in hue, but I might want to see about adding just a tiny splash of gray just to get that, that slight darkness in there. So that's what I'm gonna have a go at now. Russet brown you're using or the burnt sienna? Oh, I think it's, I don't have the thing to hand. I think it's burnt sienna. It's this one. It's the fourth from the bottom here. Okay, this, thank you. Lovely, thank you. No, yours looked a lot browner than mine. Oh, all <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Does it? Have we yeah, got yeah, that's very nice. red. All oh, right. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well then I tell, I tell you what, the, the great thing is that we know how to mix colors. So if you think there's a color that would better approximate it from your palette, then please do, you know, go, go for that. I think there are some dark browns here. I think I, my, my thought process was just that we're gonna need a lot of white for something like that to get it up to that. But if, if one of those would suit you better then absolutely go for that. I've put some of the next one down into it. Okay. Which is the russet brown. Okay. Is yours called Russet Brown, Felix? You know what? I don't have that little oh, chart right. in front of me, so I will, if you bear with me, I will go and get it. I think it's Russet Brown. Yes, it's the same one. So whichever one you feel would work best. Did, you, did our cat just jump up on the table there? Yes. Was yes. Brilliant. <laughs> He's saying hello. His name is Archie. Oh. It's a very nerdy reason. It's my girlfriend's cat. And um, like I say, we're both lawyers. And there's a criminal practitioner's textbook called Archbold. And so he's named after that. He's named after a textbook, can you believe? <laughs> Don't call him Archbold unless he's been naughty. His, his name is very much Archie. <clears throat>
So once we've got our colours that nicely approximate to those two shades of brown we've got there, we're going to get ourselves a fresh sheet of paper and we're going to start thinking about painting our goldfinch. So, Roz, as everyone else already knows, I always think it's a waste of time generally to do a pencil outline beforehand and I like to get straight in with painting the shapes in because I think we can draw with our paint brushes perfectly well. So while I'm, while I'm taping down my paper, which is a personal preference, but of course fine to just have the paper as is. What I'd like us to do is just have a look at the proportions of our picture here and just get a sense of how, what the shape is of each of these areas of color. Try, if you can, to see it not as a goldfinch, but as a collection of bits of colors and tones and shades so that we can accurately paint them when we start now. I think this is, this is one of the reasons that doing pictures of faces is so difficult because we stop seeing the, the light and shade that we're trying to recreate and we start seeing a face, we start seeing eyes and the nose and so on. And then we start drawing what we think eyes and noses look like rather than what we actually see before us. So that's why we're just gonna have a good look at what, it, at what this bird looks like. So for example, we've got this bit of brown here and how far down does that extend? Well, if I have a look with my brush, it sort of extends down to around halfway through this little curve down here. And then around the level of the top of this, we've got this little patch of brown here. And then we can have a look at this. We've got this flash here that runs in with, and then we've got this other, this other sort of latte section and this one finishes more or less just shy of where this one finishes. And then we've got this area here. This, this latte sort of color, it fades out here and it forms a sort of collar here. And I just, just want to get a sense of where these shapes are just so that we can accurately start painting them. So I think what I'd like to do is to start off with our latte color, our sort of pale creamy color, and just have a go at getting a rough shape that's the rough, the rough sort of shape of this, this sort of flash here. And the great thing is, of course, that we're not trying to get ourselves a photocopy of this picture. We're just trying to do something that looks like a goldfinch trying to create our own goldfinch. Again, I'm going to push, push the pigment around on the paper so that it's sitting most thickly where the color is darkest, just like that. Thank you. And then we can sort of see that it comes down doesn't it this this sort of this flash here it, it comes down they sort of almost hold hands over this expanse of white not quite so i'm just going to extend that down here again a rough sort of shape because that's all we need and if worse comes to worst we can just mess around we can push the paint about a bit and change the shape We 
what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look as much as possible at my photograph of the goldfinch rather than at my picture, which, well, I don't know about you, but I find it quite counterintuitive sometimes, but it really will help if you're focusing on the sort of proportions you're trying to achieve. Your hands, they can do the work for you. And again, we're going to leave that nice and rough. You can see there's a sort of feathered edge to it, isn't there? And that's something we're going to work in later. But at the, and at the minute, we're just wanting to get those basic shapes down. And we're doing our, our usual thing of adding our lighter colors first, and then we're going to progress to our darker colors. So in that spirit, if everyone's ready, I'm just going to clean, clean my brush again. One of the big advantages I think of painting songbirds like these is that they have these clearly defined areas of nice bright color, but they don't come with so many loaded associations as a, a face or something would that you worry about getting it exactly, exactly dead on. We always get lots of goldfinches in my family's garden where I'm from. And I always thought, wouldn't it be neat to be able to do a picture of one as it was actually there in front of me as a live model, but of course I'm not quick enough. They weren't polite enough to stay still for me. <laughs> so now just taking our second sort of darker color. I'm just gonna have a look at that little swatch on his back, I think, and where that is. It sort of joins in with that collar, doesn't it? So that's where I think I'm gonna start. And when I look at it, I think, oh, maybe that collar could have been a wee bit longer. So I'm just going to start it here. I'm just going to start very gently adding in that color. And it can be quite wet because we're just moving the pigment around on the page, just pulling it down. No pressure at all. Again, I'm just going to finish that just a little way short of where that latte color finishes, always paying attention to what the picture looks like and trying to get a sense of it as much as possible. And I've got this pigment sitting on the page, so I'm just going to drag it around a bit so that the darker color is where our goldfinch has the darker bits of plumage. And you notice I've left just a bit shy there. That's because I think, I think this little collar here might want a little bit more extending by me. That's something I'm going to do in a bit. But I think we've also got a similar sort of downy color down, uh, down on the tail of this bird. So I'm just going to do some of that now. Again, I think the, one of the big reasons I'm so keen to put in our lighter colors first is that it means we can make those areas a little bit big, a little bit rough. Because if we do that, then when we come to paint the darker colors, those darker colors can just go over them and we won't see that. I'm going to add in a bit more brown, I think, because this, this is just a wee bit darker, isn't it?
And then I think I'm just going to add a bit more white into that stuff, make it nice and nice and light once I've done this little patch on the chest here. I'm just going to add in a bit of white and then it can be this very faint sort of downy color just on our goldfinch's neck. This warm gray color, this sort of taupe color that I'm mixing now. I can't see that without thinking of um, boxed mushroom soup, you know, the, the ready-made mushroom soup. I used to think it was the most mm. horrible looking food ever, but it tasted fantastic. That's what I think of when I see that. I've left a metric ton of color on there. So I think I'm just gonna take some off with a bit of kitchen roll. So now that we've got these colors down, we can sort of start to see how we're building up the, almost like the architecture of our goldfinch. We've got some of the big elements sort of laid down. And again, they're a little fuzzy, but that's okay. Cause we're, we can see that the divisions here aren't exactly crisp lines, are they? And we're going to blend those in a little bit just to make that look a little bit more natural. But I think, I think the next parts we're gonna to want to do, we're gonna start with this yellow flash here, this sort of swooping S curve and then these feathers darting down like that. So for that, I'm going to take my yellow at the top right corner here. I reckon we can use that as it is. I think that's a very bright color. And again, I think the more that we have painted, the easier it is to add new elements because we can see where they interact with the other elements and how they all fit together. 
And I'm going to paint this a little bigger than it needs to be because you can see that just at the end of these feathers here, we've got, well, they're, they're sort of pointed, aren't they? We can see the different feathers. And what I'm going to do when we come to add our black, I'm just going to use a thin brush just to get that. So that's why there's this clumpy end that I've got here. I'm not worrying too much about being precise when I'm laying down the yellow just yet. And what we've seen before, of course, is that watercolors are very sociable and they do like to say hello to each other, which is good most of the time. But when we're adding our sharp black on, I think that's going to be a very bad thing if it starts getting too matey with our yellow. So I think we're just going to wait for our yellow to dry. And that's why I'm going to move on to our goldfinch's head and start looking at this red that we've got. So I reckon that this red just here will do us just fine for our goldfinch's head. It's a very vibrant color. So again, I'm just gonna have a real close look. What exactly does that red area look like? Trying to forget that we're looking at a picture of a bird here and just looking at an area of color. We've sort of got those three segments, haven't we? It's sort of a, well, sorry, those two segments, they're sort of these swoops, these sort of mirror images of each other, these semicircular top, top and bottoms. So bearing the shape in mind, I'm just gonna, making sure that my brush is not too wet, just tapping out some of the excess moisture. I'm just going to do some wet on dry to get that down. And bear in mind, of course, that there's a good bit of white plumage that we've not covered. So I'm just going to start off, I think, around here. Again, I'm not worried too much about precisely getting the shape on the top because we're going to cut through that with some black in a bit. Just as long as we've laid down that red. And then just this bit on the top, just bearing in mind that there's this black bit in between. I'm going to ask myself, well, how big is that black bit in relation to the red bit I've just done? Because that gap there, how big is it? It's sort of the size of this red bit here. So I'm just going to leave a similar sort of gap. And again, this red area sort of curves up to accommodate the beak. And then it stops pretty much directly above where the other one stops. So that's what I'm going to do. 
then just fill in the little gentle curve of the top of our avian friend's head. So I'm just going to wait a moment there just so that we're all happy we're on the same page and just so that this yellow can get a nice chance to dry before we go on to do the black. So if we're all happy just to just to add a bit of black and do say if you're not, by the way, at any time, of course, just say if I'm going too quickly or too slowly or anything. I'm just going to get the same old brush and just have a look at how these black bits fit in with our with our birds. So <clears throat> I'm going to start with this yellow flash here. We've got this bit that presses right up against it. And then we've got this sort of these feathers overlay it. So I'm just going to. I'm going to ignore that bit because that's going to be work with a finer brush. So I'm just going to do this block here, this block here coming in like that. And I'm going to paint a nice sharp wet on dry line that's going to connect that with this bit over here. And a lot of the groundwork for this has already been laid when we've done our earlier shapes. So this is going to be a little easier than the others. And I'm just turning my brush regularly just so that I can drop as much color as possible onto the page.
you can see that just to get this absolute wall of black, I'm really just dropping the pigment in like this, with these little tiny, tiny strokes, almost like I'm trying to cover it in polka dots or something, turning the brush as I go, just so that we can load this wall of really dark black, stop it from sort of diluting and spreading the way that it wants.
the reason I've been focusing on this tail area is just because just I want this red here to settle a bit before I start doing that bit. When I look at that area, I think it's interesting to note that that eye, the eye is very much black. There's a little bit of lightness there, the top half. So I'm just going to paint around the eye. I'm going to avoid it when I do the first bit of black, just because I want to be able to get that very fine little trace of white just around the eye itself. Again, I'm not going to quite extend all the way with those little, those little bursts of black because I think that's something to do with our fine brush in just a minute. And now that I'm happy that I've just got those nice areas of black down, I'm just going to wash off my mid-sized brush and just wait a moment so that we're all happy and on the same page. And then I'm going to get my fine brush and I'm going to do a few of those details that I was talking about.
Are we ready to start using our final brush or would we like another minute or so? Maybe. Yeah, I'm okay. Fine, thank you. All right. Yeah. So I've got my smaller brush. This is a size four, but anything that sort of size I think will do for, for what we're up to. I'm just going to wake that up, wave that in some water. And then I'm going to have a look at some of these sharper details that we're going to want to paint in black. We've got these little 